Welcome back to the Super Day Science Podcast, everybody. Super excited to have you back here on the show. And today we've got a very special guest, Monica Royal, calling in from Phoenix, Arizona. Monica, welcome. How are you going today? <laughs> I'm doing very well. Hello. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. So excited to have you and Chloe, your cat over there in the background on the show. <laughs> 14 years old, right? For a cat, that's a lot. <laughs> She's yeah. my baby. Yeah, I've had her for <laughs> since since she was born. Wow, amazing. Um, and uh, you are in Phoenix, Arizona. How's the weather in Phoenix? Oh, it's very hot. Um, it's been over one ten for the past week. Um, uh-huh. a little bit too hot to even be in our pool. We were uh swimming last weekend for not even thirty minutes, and it was too hot, so we decided to come back inside. <laughs> 110 just i just converted that on google it's 43 degrees celsius that's insane that's yeah that how do you survive you have to have air conditioning right yes everybody has to have air conditioning for sure um i don't know if you guys have swamp pool um what is swamp no so that's that's a different version of air conditioning that doesn't work very well in phoenix because it's Mm -hmm. so hot so everybody does have air conditioning okay swamp pool interesting um and uh so 43 degrees what do you do all day if you can't go outside like uh i mean like many people can't go outside now because of the coronavirus but you can't even go into probably onto the balcony you can't even open a window that's how bad it is but- so a lot of porches that we have have the ceiling fans outside mm. um and strangely enough in the shade it is uh, significantly cooler. Um, I don't know if you've heard Phoenix being a dry heat. Um, so it's very, it's very true. If you step into the shade, it's a significant difference. Okay. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Well, it's good. Uh, it's good uh, that that uh, there's a way out. Does this normally happen throughout the year? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's it's hot. Hit like one twenties in the summer. Wow. Wow, mm-hmm. that's crazy. All right. Well, Monica, it's really cool to meet you. I've been seeing your name or like your your photo, your profile pop up in a lot of places, especially on LinkedIn. So like I, I go on to reply to somebody or post a message and I see a message from Monica or like like an, an, some somewhere you commented on something and you have very distinctive uh, photo, which is easy to tell. You have this bright red hair in your LinkedIn photo and a huge smile. So uh, it's hard to miss. Um, so you've been very active and then and then we had data science go virtual a few weeks ago uh, in June. So it's all it's been about a month ago now. Um and you were so active there as well. Like you were just replying to every commenting posting. And first of all, I wanted to say a huge thank you that helped um uh guide people who had questions and that um like even for me it felt like wow, like we have um a huge uh, like a huge discussion going and you're always participating in it. So huge thank you for that. And I wanted to ask you, why have you been so active uh, on the data science, in the data science world? And, um, you know, what's, what are the motivations for that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I love, I just love being active in the data science community. It's such a great community and everyone has such good things to say and so interesting topics to share. Um, It actually started back in September um, Kate, I'm going to butcher her Strashny. last name. Strashny. <laughs> she actually uh, posted on LinkedIn asking, are you a consumer or a contributor? And all, you know, I wasn't big on social media at all. And so I thought about it and I was like, I really want to respond to this post. And it took me a while to even respond to the post to say, oh, I'm just a consumer because that would mean that I would be contributing, right? Mm -hmm. And so I wrote it out, I hit the enter button and I was like, oh my gosh. So I basically said, you know, I'm a consumer but I really do want to try to start contributing. And then the next day I was like, oh, here's my first post. And (laughs) you know, I'm so nervous to do it. What was it about? What was your first post about? It was just about, you know, what I wanna do. Um, I had found um, everyone was doing this 100 days of code thing. Mm-hmm. And I was I originally thought that they were all part of some group that mm-hmm. I needed to be 
you know, a member of, I didn't know if I needed to, you know, pay dues. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) I did some research on Google 100 days of code and found that it's just a general challenge that people were participating in. And you can even tweak it to your own and have 100 days of YouTube, 100 days of Instagram. So I chose 100 days of learning um, because I am so curious. I can't stick to one thing. So just coding for 100 days, I want to, you know, learn about uh, different topics or, or uh, I have a background in uh, general IT. So I have a lot of cybersecurity, information security and all of that. So I can't just, you know, stick to one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. So I chose to participate in 100 days of learning. uh, And that was my first post. And then the next day, I saw how much engagement that I got on that post. And that that blew me away. I was just Mm -hmm. like, this is really awesome. People actually read my post who am I? Like, <laughs> uh, why are they reading my stuff? And um, I made that commitment. So I had 100 days to still go. Um, and so every day, I just thought of something um, to write about. I Something that you learned on that day. Correct. Yeah. So my uh, topics really came from something that I did that day, a uh, podcast that I would listen to, books that I would read on my commute. I do a lot of audio books um, or just some articles that I would see on LinkedIn or some uh, YouTube video that I saw that's on an interesting topic. I would decide to write about that. And it got to the point where I would uh, have to start compiling a list because I had so many ideas. So I had kind of like a backlog of topics that I can uh, Mm -hmm. talk about. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. And so, um, that was a hundred days. Uh, is it a hundred days in a row, or are you allowed to take breaks? So there was a couple times that I took breaks. Um, I did start in September, so there were a few holidays, and um, I I took breaks, and I kind of talked about how you shouldn't feel guilty for taking breaks, um, mm-hmm. just because for two reasons. I mean, it's holidays; you should spend time with family and friends, of course. And then the other side is that really sparked creativity, taking a break, because you had, you know, instead of just focusing on, I have to write, I have to write, then you were kind of in your own head, thinking about other things to write. And so it was a creativity sparker. Gotcha. Um, Were all these things you learned part of in the data science world, or were they random, maybe in, in other domains? Yeah, so a lot of the posts are for data science, data literacy, data governance. Um, Some off topics would be cybersecurity. Um, I do Friday fun facts Mm -hmm. where I bring in just a random silly fact that I find. Um, I also like to relate some uh, data topics to food analogies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) I feel like if you bring that in, Uh, more people can really relate to the topic and understand some more complicated topics. Give us an example, like a couple of examples of the things you learned. What are like some things that are memorable to you from that 100 day challenge that uh, really stand out those learnings? So during the whole 100 days of learning, I thought the most benefit was the engagement and the comments that I would get from others. So I always try to make it a point to ask a question at the end. Uh, Maybe, you know, I was struggling with a visualization that I was trying to create, or maybe I'm curious and want to take a poll. Are you uh, side R or side Python and why? So um, the engagement that happens and learning from others within the community, I think is the most beneficial. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So you post something um, that people would be likely or interested to comment on, and you're interested to hear their thoughts. Exactly. And then uh, even better is when you have other people talking back and forth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you have channel. like a side conversation on your thread. Yeah. So then it makes it makes me happy to see that other people are inspired and encouraged to share ideas with each other. 
Okay, what's one of the most uh, thought-provoking comments that you read of people posting after you made uh, like you posted one of your learnings and then some people posted on that? Like, what what was something that pro- provoked most thinking in you? So the other day I posted a topic on general time management, mm-hmm. uh, specifically related to how I structure my Fridays. So what I tend to do is save all of my tasks that are easier for Fridays, just because you know everyone's excited for the weekend, they're counting down the hours uh, for the week to end. And um, so if you set your schedule in that way, you are more productive and you actually get things done. Mm-hmm. And within those comments and uh, the within the comments and the discussions that were happening in that thread, Uh, people shared ideas on how they structured their Fridays or general time management ideas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And what what, did anything stand out to you? So I guess one thing that stood out is people still uh, handwrite their notes. Mm. (laughs) I don't know. Do you still handwrite notes? Yep. Yep. You do? Okay. (laughs) I even handwrite my plans for the week. I handwrite everything as much as I can because I go. I have this uh, notepad here. I go through maybe one of these every two months, like just because I write, or even a month sometimes. I write a lot, uh, and it helps me. I don't know. It's just like kind of an old-fashioned soothing feeling. I guess I have <laughs> from writing. Yeah, I've gotten to the point where I take notes on my computer a lot faster and more efficiently than I can in handwriting. Yeah. To the point where my handwriting is almost illegible. Oh, like I, wow. can't... <laughs> <laughs> I do have an ongoing grocery list on my refrigerator. Mm-hmm. And when I go to the grocery store, it's just so funny. I'm like, what is what is this thing? <laughs> what did I write there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So why, why did that come to mind just now? That was one of the comments was that uh, somebody feels, somebody commented that they felt that handwriting resonated better than typing it out, um, making them remember it better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's it's to do with synesthesia that if you have several senses involved, like with handwriting, like the motion of writing a letter, um, I think it, it, it triggers different parts of your brain than typing it up, and that helps you remember. It's kind of like when you're reading, we have this sub-vocalization, and... It's some people try to get rid of it to read faster, but then that impacts retention because subvocalization is another form, another sense, like using your muscles in your mouth in addition to your eyes, to which will help you memorize because that information is stored. I guess I'm not a brain expert, but I guess it's stored in two parts of your brain instead of one, so you memorize it better or something like that. But I think each to their own, you know, like whatever is works for you, right? At the end of the day. Definitely. So that just reminds me of watching movies with subtitles. Mm. Sometimes I'll do that even if it is in English. And I feel like I do retain the information better because I'm reading it and I'm hearing it. Mm. That's a good point. That's very good. But I get so distracted by the subtitles. I'm, I miss what's going on. It does take a little bit to get used to, I'll admit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, okay. Very interesting. Sounds like you're quite into productivity. Let's talk a bit about that. So um, what is productivity to you? Productivity is about being able to accomplish a task, no matter how big or small, uh, important or not important. It's about being able to complete a task. Okay. And um, why is productivity tricky? Because people constantly multitask. They're on their phones, they're answering emails, they're, you know, distracted by just the environment around them. I'm looking out my window and I see people walk by and I'm, oh, okay, let's just walk them walk by. (laughs) (laughs) Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the key then is uh, to simply just focus on one task at a time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do you do that? So there's a time management technique called the Pomodoro technique. Have you ever mm-hmm. heard of this? I have heard of it, but I, I, I'm not well versed in it. So I'd love to hear about it again. Definitely. 
So Pomodoro technique, a Pomodoro is one of those uh, kitchen timers Mm -hmm. that's in the shape of a tomato. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe that's the Italian word for tomato is Pomodoro, right? I think so. (laughs) Um, So what you do with that is um, you you don't technically have to have the Pomodoro. Of course, you can just use a a Mm -hmm. clock that's on your cell phone. But Mm -hmm. what you want to do is set that timer for 25 minutes and only focus on getting one task completed. So that means no multitasking, turn off your phone, turn off your emails, turn off the TV, um, even maybe turn off the music in the background. Sorry, five minutes. 25 minutes. Ah, 25 minutes, okay. No, five minutes. (laughs) Some C tasks. (laughs) (laughs) Gotcha. 25 minutes, and then what? Five minutes. Um, And then you might not get the task done, the full task done within that 25 minutes, but that's okay. Uh, What you do want to do is over time, you'll start understanding what tasks take how long. And what I do is adjust that time accordingly. Basically, Uh the main point being to have time boxes set up within your day so that you'll be able to get tasks completed okay okay gotcha um so if it takes longer eventually you'll learn to adjust to allocate more time that's what i do yes Mm -hmm. and what happens after 25 minutes i think is it correct you take like a five minute break and then you do another 25 minutes yes or you might need to uh, take longer if you need to regroup or um if you're in a sort of agile process assess you know, what you have completed, do you, did you complete things in accordance to how you planned, or do you need to pivot and start something in a different Mm -hmm. manner? Okay, that's interesting. Um, For me, I've been, uh, I've mentioned this on the podcast a few times before, I've been reading this book, uh, Deep Work, and my approach is slightly different. I find for me, 25 minutes is not enough. It's like, Mm -hmm. uh, it just, because it takes me a while to get into a task. My, I've realized over time that my golden uh, amount of minutes is 90 minutes. So if I can focus on something for one one and a half hours, like a bit less than that is usually just not enough. A bit more than that is usually I start to procrastinate. So at 90 minutes, for me, it works like that. But I guess it's it's different for everybody, right? So there's many different techniques out there. And what, again, what works for you works best. Can you focus for 90 full minutes? Don't they say 45 is the human attention span before they start feeding out? Maybe, but I think it only, it takes me 45 minutes to first get into the task. And then I focus on it for 45 minutes. <laughs> okay. So that's, that's the price you pay. Um, another thing you mentioned in your notes was the 2190 rule. What is that about? Yes. So the 2190 rule is applied to people that are trying to create or break a habit. So Mm -hmm. it states that if you do something for 21 consecutive days, then you're able to create a habit. If you continue that habit for an additional 90 days, then you create a life change. Mm. So then... So I structured my 100 days of learning in that way. Um, I don't know if it's 90 full days or if it's 90 days in addition to the 21. So I ended up doing 111 days of learning. Nice. (laughs) Just to really get in that life change. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. And how do you feel your life has changed since then? I am a lot more um, confident in sharing my posts realizing that, you know, not everyone's going to agree with what I post. People are going to have, you know, comments that are um, different than my views. And I enjoy that. I learn from that. And I think other people learn from that too in the engagement within, you know, the discussions back and forth on that thread. That's very admirable. Um, So does it often happen that somebody uh, disagrees with your post and even tries to shoot you down? Like, how do you, what do you do about that? I have had a couple haters. <laughs> um, I think that means that I've achieved uh, visibility, maybe. Uh-huh. I'm doing things right, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and it doesn't, it doesn't bother you? 
Like it doesn't um, affect your mood? I would say it does just because um, I'm like, oh, you know, why? Why would you post that negative mm -hmm. remark? But then, like I said, I kind of just learn from it. I take their points of view and kind of try to research on their points. And I think I'm more better well-rounded that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. uh, I I try not to let it negatively impact me. Like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have posted that. Or there have been a couple of times where I'm like, oh, maybe I should edit my post mm -hmm. and decided against it because I originally posted it for a reason. And mm -hmm. that's just, I just wanted to receive uh, candid feedback. Being true to yourself. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Um, and speaking of learning, one of the things that you're a fan of is, <laughs> if I may say it in this way, uh, is failing. That failing is a great way to learn, right? I think that's a very, very true statement. Yes, that um, is a very true statement. What? Why? Why are you believer in that? Everyone's going to fail at some point in their lives, mm -hmm. and you just need to get used to it and mm -hmm. get out of your comfort zone. There's a saying out there: uh, "Nothing grows in your comfort zone, so step outside of it to grow." Mm -hmm. Nice. And uh, what are some examples of you failing recently? So specifically, if you're taking a course online, say in Python, SQL, or R, um, and you go through the course, you follow everything to the T, you pass, you get your certificate, but what did you really learn? <laughs> um, some of the courses, they're kind of set up for you to succeed. Um, other courses, which are my favorite, actually give you dirty data and they kind of let you, you know, go through the data preparation process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, those are the most beneficial. Um, so I would say after completing those types of courses, then you take a different data set and apply what you learned to that different data set. Mm -hmm. um, so you import all your libraries and then you're reading in your CSV and you get your first error. You just failed and you haven't even started, mm -hmm. but it's okay. It really is okay. Uh, it's an opportunity to learn why did that error happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I understood. Uh, what's another example that recently happened to you? In terms of failing, I'm just saying in general, when you when you fail, you want to know why you failed and to fix that failure. So mm -hmm. the approach would be to get on Google. Google should be your best friend. Mm -hmm. um, if you type in your specific error code that you're getting, your error message, then you would likely stumble upon a website called Stack Overflow, which is where uh, lots of people post uh, those types of error messages or types of questions that they have. And you're likely to find, you know, what's going on and how to fix your your situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's a um, a popular website. I've definitely been on it many times. Uh, you actually talk about being active on discussion boards. That that helps learning as well, um, and not just reading them, but contributing to them as well. Whether it's Stack Overflow, or you also mentioned uh, before the podcast uh, Udemy. A question and answers sections. Um, so tell us a bit about that. Like, how does that help you learn more? How does this engagement there help you learn more? Yeah. So if you're on a discussion board, um, likely you're thinking that it would just be for you to post your questions to the instructor. Why am I having this error? What do I do? You want somebody else to kind of answer that for you. Mm -hmm. I think if you're being active on the discussion board and helping other people out, then you're learning more about the topic because mm -hmm. you're doing your own research, trying to reproduce uh, what the other people are experiencing it and um, being able to help them troubleshoot their issues. So you kind of like learn about issues that maybe you will come across in the future. So preventing yourself or like helping yourself um, solve them even before you come across them. Oh, definitely. 
Yeah, yeah. there's been uh, several times on the discussion board that ask about, oh, I just got this error message. I'm like, oh yeah, me too. And I Googled it and here it is. And I'll give them some resources, uh, send them some links and uh, th that'll help them out. Mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. Um, okay, being active on discussion boards. What, what else comes to your mind that uh, helps learning? Something like to do with continuous learning. You're a big fan of continuous learning. What's another uh, approach you have? So we spoke about failing. Uh, we spoke about like a uh, commitment as in 100 days of learning, consumer versus contributor. That's already four methods. And active on, on active being active on discussion boards, that's already four methods. So what's, do you have another method to round it up to five? So no matter what level you are within your career or your knowledge in a particular co uh, topic, don't be afraid to um, periodically revisit the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. um, there's several fundamental courses that I go back to just to refresh on, say, a statistical, you know, what is a p-value? Uh, what is a null hypothesis? Uh, just to keep that fresh in my mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, revisit fundamentals. That's really cool. Uh, definitely important uh, to focus on your foundation. Um, all right, so that was about learning. That was very uh, exciting and um, some some useful tips. I think it about about these um, strategies for learning everybody's going to have their own combination, right? So for, for me, something else might work, you know, like for me, recording a video course might work to help learn something. Or um, another technique that maybe I use is to put myself under pressure, right? So give myself only a one day to discover a topic instead of a week, because I know I'll procrastinate. So everybody has their own combination. And we learn about your combination, which is, again, to recap, uh, failing uh, is a great way to learn. Uh, 100 days of learning as a challenge to continuously to develop this habit. Um, consumer versus contributor, not just being consumer, but also contributing in on LinkedIn or including other discussion boards such as Stack Overflow, uh, Udemy questions and answers. That's the fourth uh, uh, thing. And the fifth one you mentioned, rev revisiting the fundamentals. And um, I appreciate you sharing them because while that combination might not work for every single person, some people listening to this can take away one or two and add it to their combination of strategies for learning and enhance that. You know, for instance, something that I find exciting is this whole habit thing that you said, the 100 days of doing the same thing in a row. That's really cool. And um, sometimes I do that unconsciously. Uh, like I've been doing stretches before going to sleep for the past probably three months, three or no, four months, so over a hundred days. And it's become like a second nature to me. Like I really want to do it before going to sleep. But now that you've said it and I see you're succeeding with it in that same way, I might more consciously think about it and like apply it as a technique, just as you applied to be able to share uh, on LinkedIn and not be worried about what people say. Exactly. That's an important point that you bring up in that you shouldn't feel that you need to spend hours upon hours every single day. It could be a small task such as, you know, stretching or... Uh, meditation, another one, right? Meditation, yes, that is a good one too. Like cooking your own dinner instead of taking getting takeout every time. Or um, another one I'm trying, I'm really, I really want to develop as a habit is every morning spend one hour before I do any, before even I take my phone off flight mode, reading like just read a book for an hour every single morning you know it might not work for everybody in the morning some people prefer reading in the evening but for me that works you know like every or having a nap you know like having a nap for 30 minutes a day every single day and that that helps refresh your mind but you need to carve out time for it you need to put in the calendar you need to be you know in the right place in the right mind space to do that i think there's a lot of things that are some are directly technical related like data science related or learning technical skills but some are more psychological that will help you do the technical things more efficiently more productively as you say completely agree i have an app on my phone that um, has many exercises that i do in the day so it'll be like seven to ten minutes of uh 
a series of exercises just to get me awake in the morning. So I'm not so. That's awesome. What's the app called? (laughs) Ooh, there's several of them that are the same. Um, This one, let me look it up for you, is called Fit On. Fit On. Hmm. I don't have that one. Fit On. Interesting. I downloaded Fit Bod. (laughs) <laughs> a few months ago I did it one day and then I just like couldn't be bothered and I, it's bad it's bad I should do it more uh, but a recent one I got a cool one is called Elevate it's kind of like Lumosity Lumosity is like a mind brain training Elevate is similar to that and they've got some different kind of games in there to train your brain I like that one I'm writing that down taking notes on my laptop <laughs> <laughs> yeah as you mentioned Okay. Okay. Interesting. So another thing I wanted to ask you, um, this podcast, you said you've listened to it for quite a while. I'm just curious, like how many episodes have you heard and, um, like what, uh, why, why do you listen to it? I was first introduced to this podcast when I was taking one of the, one of your courses on Udemy, Mm. um, back probably two years. Do you remember which one? Oh, uh, I think it was Data Science A to Z. Okay, okay. So then it would have been the episode with Nicholas Cepeda. Uh, possibly. He that got a, a job at Disney. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, gotcha. <laughs> I was def- I've definitely heard 50 plus episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of my favorites is with you and Jose Patia. Okay. When you're doing the battle of the instructors. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah. Yeah, well, you recorded that one in Berlin. So, but why do you keep listening? Like, what, what um, in speaking of learning, what's uh, your most valuable uh, takeaway or continuous takeaway from these sessions? You have such a variety of different topics and different people that you have on your show that bring in their views of the world, their views of the different areas of data science. And I think it's important to um, be aware of all of the different areas and just keep up to date with all of the changes that are happening within data science. Okay, gotcha. Interesting. So speaking of uh, keeping up to date, uh, the podcast for sure, for me personally, is a way to keep up to date because we invite guests like um, who speak, as you say, about very different topics, and I am able to uh, understand, hey, like what's going on in the world? What is this person looking to? What is this person looking to? But what are some other ways that you, as a data scientist, in fact, a data science manager, um, that that you keep up to date with what the technical trends, the uh, industry trends, and and things like that? Um, any other tips that you can recommend to others listening? I love going to conferences Mm. and when this whole COVID thing started, I was uh, missing the conferences, uh, but I was so excited when everyone started transitioning to the virtual type setup. And so I'm just very excited that I can still continue being active in the community and conferences and learning new things. Okay. Okay, fantastic. And uh, uh, well, speaking of conferences, then how how was your experience at Data Science Go Virtual? Oh my gosh, it was the best. I I'm just I'm not just saying this. It was the best <laughs> virtual conference I attended. Um, wow. I think the interaction uh, via the chat rooms was phenomenal. There was two chat rooms. One was dedicated for exchanging contact information, mostly LinkedIn profiles. And then the others being the uh, stage, if you were watching the people that were giving the presentations on stage, there was some side talk related to the topic that was being presented. Um, I, I enjoyed the interaction and also I think it was better than if you were there live because you couldn't have that interaction. You can't just like start talking to your neighbor next to you while somebody that they're presenting that's a little bit rude. So I think this is a really, really well organized. Awesome. And through the networking sessions, who did you manage to meet? So 
there was several uh, people that I met. Uh, I can't count them all. I was uh, that was my favorite part, actually, was mm. those networking sections, the speed networking, everybody was calling it. Yeah. You only had three minutes for both of you to connect to kind of say your elevator speech or whatever. And then you were just immediately cut off after the three minutes. Yeah. But you can stay <laughs> in touch. It. You can exchange details. By exactly. I think that was a great feature of that. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay. So, and speaking of staying up to date with trends, what, what, what's like the, the most valuable thing uh, in terms of trends and data science that you took away from that event? There were some talks on deep learning, some talks on visualization, um, some talks on uh, ethics and data science. Michelle, how do you say her last name? Michelle Godet. Godet. I really enjoyed Michelle Godet's uh, workshop on Tableau. Uh, mm -hmm. She was able to give us some files and we worked right along with her. And uh, she gave some tips and tricks that I didn't even know. And I use Tableau almost on a daily basis. So I really wow. did enjoy her workshop. That's awesome. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, all right. Well, that was very exciting. And uh, uh, it was cool to see you participating in all, all the chat rooms in uh, Data Science Go. So that was that was really fun. Um, and what else did I want to talk about? One more thing. In your top skills for to learn for 2020, you talk about strategic thinking. And I think this would be a, a good way for us to um, end, or a good note for us to end the podcast on. Tell us a bit about strategic thinking and why is it an important skill for everybody to master? So strategic thinking is where you want to think of your long-term goals, where you want to be. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't consider it goal setting. I would consider it a journey. So I like to think of, you know, when you're when you're achieving a goal, it's not just about, you know, obtaining a certificate or completing a specific course. It really is about the journey and learn along the way and who you can help along the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. OK. And um, how often does a person need, should a person think about uh, their Maybe basically take uh, take on this strategic thinking. Is it like a monthly thing? Is it a annual thing? How often do you do it? I typically do it every six months, mm -hmm. and I have a yearly outlook and a five year outlook. The five year outlook um, it usually is I'm just going to remain awesome. Uh, it's a little harder for me to think of what I'm going to be doing in five years just because things constantly change and uh, you might not even be able to uh, guide those changes. So. <laughs> okay, gotcha. And uh, what's your yearly outlook right now, if you don't mind sharing? My, my general goals for the year are just to keep up to date with uh, data science uh, by attending as many conferences that I can, being active within the community on LinkedIn and just doing as much uh, personal research that I can and keeping uh, and, and making posts on LinkedIn as I, as I do. Okay. Wow. Wonderful. Well, you're definitely up to date, up to speed with your yearly goal. So that's fantastic to see. Um, may, that's uh, very inspiring as well. Speaking of inspiration, what, what um, um, to, to finish off, what is something that you can wish to our listeners? So some like inspirational thought or something that you'd like to uh, share with them to give them that motivational boost to, to pursue their careers and become the best versions of themselves. Don't focus so much on where you are within your journey. Uh, even if you're a beginner, you'll be able to help out others that are in your, in your level. Mm-hmm. Don't think that you need to know everything in the world to be able to consider yourself to be successful or to consider yourself to be a data scientist. There's always Google. Remember that. <laughs> awesome. Love it. Love it. Well, Monica, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. And 
before I let you go, uh, could you please tell us where it's the best places to connect with you if people would like to follow your career or just get in touch? Yeah, definitely. Um, follow me on LinkedIn. That's where I'm the most active. Um, I also post all of my uh, LinkedIn posts to hashtag nerd nourishment. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to follow that hashtag nerd for to see my posts. Nerd okay. nourishment. Yes, I actually yes. wrote a little blurb on what that means. Did you want to hear it? Yeah, sure. Okay. So nerd nourishment are the thoughts that run through your head that are used as fuel that gives you the tenacity to seek and obtain the random knowledge that ultimately helps you become the winner of bar trivia. Oh, wow. <laughs> Amazing. Love it. Love it. Uh, well, there you go. Hashtag nerd nourishment. And for your 100 day challenge, there's a, there's a cool post you have on your LinkedIn. Uh, how was my 100 days of learning? So uh, it's interesting read. People can find your posts there. Uh, and you use the, the hashtag 100 days of learning. Is that right? Yes, I did. Okay, cool. In case people want to repeat your awesome feat. And uh, then you can also see what, what they're up to as well. Yes, definitely. Um, Please participate. It was a wonderful challenge. Fantastic. Uh, Monica, what's a book you can recommend to our listeners? So my book is a little uh, different than the books typically on your show because it's not a uh, data science book per se. I have it right here. It's by Malcolm Gladwell. It's called Blink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so this, I think, really sparked my curiosity in data science. It's uh, the power of thinking without thinking. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of different experiments, but from a um, psychology perspective. It was mm -hmm. one of my required readings in my psychology class in university. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. So what's the biggest takeaway from there? So they had a lot of experiments, as I mentioned, but it was from a human psychology perspective. So one of those challenges being the blind Pepsi taste challenge mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the 1980s, if you remember that one. Um, I've heard of it. Okay. So it just sparked my interest in data science, I think, because in my head, I was like, oh, how did they measure that experience? How did they, how did they know, statistically speaking, uh, how the Pepsi won? Mm -hmm. um, but I think this book could easily be turned into a more traditional data science book. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So it is Fantastic. it is interesting if you're into psychology. <laughs> okay. Blink by whom? Malcolm Gladwell. Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. Awesome. Uh, Monica, thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. And thanks for sharing your ideas about learning and uh, how you learn. I'm sure it's going to be helpful to others. Thank you so much again for having me on the show. It was a pleasure. So there you go, everybody. Thank you so much for being part of this conversation. Hope you got some valuable takeaways. Hope you enjoyed it. And most importantly, hope you got some inspiration. I found it really inspiring to uh, see what Monica did in her 100 day learning challenge and um, how she's been able to participate in the data science community not just as a consumer which is totally fine as well but also as a contributor as somebody who gives back who inspires people who sparks conversations who shares ideas i think that is very valuable for the community as a whole so if you're sitting on the fence about it then take example from monica's journey and get involved as well as always, you can get the show notes for this episode at superdatascience.com slash 399. That's superdatascience.com slash 399. There you'll be able to find the transcript for this episode, any materials we mentioned on the show, and of course, a URL to Monica's LinkedIn where you can connect with her. And one final thing, Monica in our conversation mentioned Data Science Go Virtual, which is our virtual conference. We hosted that one in June this year. Well, we are hosting a second one. It is happening in October this year, and you can get your ticket at datasensego.com slash virtual. It's absolutely free. There's no cost attached to it whatsoever. We want to help the community get together, network, hear from amazing speakers, and for all of us to grow together. So head on over to datasensego.com slash virtual and apply for your ticket today. 
And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I look forward to seeing you back here next time. Until then, happy analyzing.